Okay, this is definitely going to be very short today. Oh. I'm really just cutting it down here. This is actually part three in a little series. I was trying to get to David and Goliath, but we're still not there yet, and we won't get there today. Um, but this is the context right before that happens. Well, last time I spoke, I talked about how um, the prophet and the king had a little bit of a blow up, and they both went their separate ways, never to see each other again. Well, Samuel said to the king, um, he said, the Lord has torn the kingship of Israel away from you today and has given it to your neighbor who is better than you. And then the very next verse, starting in first, uh, Samuel chapter 16, it says, the Lord said to Samuel, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? So the prophet went home and then he went into a state of mourning. So isn't it interesting to realize that even though the prophet declared to the king today the kingdom is being ripped from you he still went on being the king the prophet still went home everything still looked the same on the outside how many of you have ever been in a relationship before and there was a specific moment that something was said something was done and you knew in that moment that is the end this is over but the relationship usually has a little bit of an afterlife right you still see each other a few more times you still talk a few more times because just like a cut flower right as soon as you cut that flower you have determined its death yet you can go put it in a vase and look at it and it can still be pretty for a couple of days a few months ago my my dad likes to buy roses for my mom a few months ago he bought this beautiful bouquet of roses and that thing just kept living and living and i don't know how long it was alive several weeks five weeks or something we're like we have never seen a bouquet last this long ever this is so unusual but my point is as soon as that word as soon as that cutting happens the flowers are still pretty but it takes a little while for the life to drain out and sometimes uh relationships are that same way right there's life you have joined with another person right um to become one you create an entity and it takes a little while for the life to drain out of what you've created um and so that's why it can be um very hurtful for example if someone ghosts you or something you're dating somebody for months and all of a sudden they ghost and what that means is they don't say i changed my mind i'm not interested anymore or i'm breaking up with you or this is not working out they don't say anything they just disappear, disappear. out of nowhere right and that can be so shocking so most of us have gone through mourning before and I don't know if you've ever noticed it, but sometimes something just hits you really hard and you're like, I just can't believe how upset this is making me. You know, maybe it's somebody you weren't even that close to. Uh, you know, there was a girl I danced with and when she passed, it was like, it was so disturbing to me. Or like a lot of people a year or so ago heard about Kobe Bryant and his daughter and the group of people they were with. And it was, oh, it was just felt so gut-wrenching. Whereas somebody else in your life can pass and it feels like, okay, you know, I'm processing this. It's okay. I'm not having a breakdown, you know, like, I think it was last year we had one of our dogs pass away, but she, her name was Primo. She had been around so long. I don't know how old she was. Like 14. she was 14 years old. Okay. Well, eventually she passed on, but it was okay well for drusha maybe it wasn't okay but everybody else was kind of taking it um in stride because she had had a long full life and we saw it kind of coming you could see her you know kind of losing a little bit of energy and stuff over time well we had a cat that we had taken in from outside a homeless cat uh who would sit out on our porch for several years well we finally took it in <laughs> And then one morning I find the cat, you know, dead. And it was just, it was so shocking because I wasn't expecting that. I didn't see it coming, you know. I didn't see the life draining out, or at least it was happening, but I wasn't 
aware that it was happening. Um, so my point being here is that uh, when, once that word goes forth, the life begins to wilt out of a situation. So in 1 Samuel chapter 10, the prophet Samuel anoints Saul to be the king. Well, by chapter uh, 15, he speaks the word. He declares, today the kingdom has been torn away from you. So he cut the flower. And even though he continued to be the king in everyone's eyes, the, the life was wilting out of his kingship. Things started to go downhill. And that's where we get the term toxic relationship. A toxic relationship would be something that has no future, something that has already been cut. It's already been cut. For example, if you're starting out and somebody says, well, I know I'm not interested in marriage or I don't believe in monogamy or I, I'm not really looking for a relationship, just want to hang out or whatever it is. What they're telling you is this flower's already been cut, oh my goodness. right? This bush is not growing, right? We're, uh, it, it's already, this relationship is already dead in the water. So what we know is that for something to be healthy, it has to move. There has to be life. There has to be action. There has to be progress, right? And so I was listening to a sermon from Apostle Mike Corinaria the other day, and he was talking about the Dead Sea and how it's kind of, I guess, landlocked. And so nothing can live in there. It's just everything is dead. There's no life. And so that's what a toxic relationship is. You're saying, I'm going to join uh, together with something that is dead and it has no future. It's already been uh, determined. Okay, so here in 1 Samuel 16, the Lord says uh, to Samuel, How long are you going to mourn for Saul? And like I said, sometimes mourning in our lives can be more severe or less severe, sometimes depending on our expectations. So if you had an expectation of a person and then they didn't fulfill it, wow, that's shocking, it's disappointing. You're wondering, how did I not see that? Mm -hmm right? How, how did I not see that? Or something doesn't work out in a job or whatever it is, it can be shocking because it violates our expectations. So, but whenever we join with something, whether a workplace or a person or, um, you know, they call a corporation is when you say we're coming together, we're creating this separate corporation. It's a corpus it's a corpse it's a separate body it's a separate entity just like a ballet right when you have like a, a group of ballet dancers together they call it a cordy ballet i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly but it's a body it's now its own entity of dancers well um anyway so once we realize okay this has been a disappointment it was shocking. We didn't see it. We weren't expecting that to come. Uh, but we have to move on. And like God is telling the prophet, don't just continue in the state of mourning. Don't just stay there. How long will you stay in that state of shock and stun and disappointment over what you didn't necessarily see coming? right? So like I said, sometimes the life has to drain out of something, but don't just let it keep draining you and draining you and draining you and draining you, right? At some point we have to fill our horn with oil and go as God told the prophet Samuel. So mourning is necessary. That is part of the transition process, but he said, fill up your horn with oil and go. So I don't know about you, but when you have access to the internet and you get on there every day, it can be like so disheartening and so discouraging when you see certain messages that are being preached. Um, it's really, it can be gut-wrenching. Some people call it triggering. It's triggering. Uh, it's very triggering when you hear certain things because when you hear that, you say, well, is that what all men believe? 
when you hear something, you say, is that what all women believe? When you see certain images on the news, you're like, is that what all of this race are like? Is that what all of this people are like? Is that what these people are all thinking? Right? And so you end up thinking, it makes you feel like, oh, I'm alone, I'm isolated because this represents the view of this whole group, right? And so just as the prophet declared the beginning of Saul's reign, and then he also declared the end of Saul's reign, the prophet also had to rise up and he had to declare the new beginning. So wherever you are at in your life, perhaps you need to declare the ending of something in your life, right? Something that has held dominion over you, something that has had a voice in your life, whether it's a channel on YouTube or a news outlet or, or a person or whatever has kept you stuck in a uh, possibly a stagnant, dead situation where you're just wasting your energy and emotions or something that is um, causing you disappointment. In other words, like it says, God regretted that he made Saul king, but God didn't just sit in a state of regret, right? He decided on a new king. He didn't just say, well, all kings are this. All kings are Saul. All kings are a disappointment. No king will ever work out. <laughs> you know, no king will ever do what I want, right? No, God has a new king. And so that's my word for you today. God has a new king. And so it is our job to rise up and declare when that moment comes that the covenant is broken or the violation, uh, the expectation is violated or whatever it is. It's up to us to rise up with our voice and say, today, this has come to an end. We have to speak and declare the end of that reign in our life. And sometimes we have to say, you do not represent me, nor do you represent all men, all women, all of this race, all of this group, all of this state, all of this country. You do not represent that. You do not represent me. You're not my king. The kingdom that you have in my life, the dominion you have in my life is ripped from you today. And now we have to fill our horn. <laughs> now we have to fill our horn with oil and go find the new king, right? The new king. So Saul is not a picture of how everything will be. So don't allow one person or two people or five people or 15 people or even 50 people to make you believe you're the only one, you're all alone, everyone is different. Okay, so the story of the prophet Elijah in 1 Kings 19, this is the prophet and he wanted to unalive himself, okay? He says, it says, he said, I have had enough, Lord, take my life. The government was after him at that time. Jezebel was threatening to come find him and do away with him. So he laid down, it says he laid down and slept under a broom tree and he asked God, please take my life from me. Um, and then, you know, it says the Lord's asking him like, what's wrong? What are you doing here? All that. And he said, I have been zealous for the Lord God of hosts, but the Israelites, right? But King Saul, but this person, this woman, this man, this job, this teacher, whoever who disappointed me, my family, whoever, the Israelites have abandoned your covenant, tore down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left. I alone am left. Now, all of us went through some psychological abuse for during 2020, 2021, 2022 right? And part of that abuse was to try to make you feel like you are all alone. You are isolated. And um, 
and not just that, but to feel threatened in the process, right? About this race and that race and those people and these people and none of these people share my values, right? Because the TV is saying something or the video is saying something or whatever. This is a representation of everyone, right? But as we see in the story with the prophet Elijah, God it says he lies down under the tree and is like, God, just go ahead and take my life. You know, I'm tired of this. Um, but it says, I think God made some hot bread for him on the stones and all that. And he said, you need to get your energy, right? You need to fill up your horn because you still have more, uh, you still have further to go on your journey. And God was actually going to send him on a journey to go anoint another king and anoint another prophet and, and go find Elisha and do all this stuff. So he still had all this stuff he needed to do. Well, that's what God's telling you today. You have to declare the ending and then you have to fill up, right? So I went to the chiropractor on Friday with Jersha and my brother-in-law, Lynn, and she kind of goes somewhat regularly, but I hadn't been in, I don't know, a year and a half or something, a long time. And wow, it was just so relaxing. It was so relaxing. Um, but also the doctor is just such a kind person. When he hugged me, it was just like my whole body just, uh, relaxed. And I was like, oh, sorry. And he's like, no, 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 do you do, do it or whatever. Um, but yeah, I thought of that verse where it said, uh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and those who run to it, they are safe. Amen. And so we should be that person for other people to be able to run to us. And when they're with us, they should feel safe right? Meaning they're able to let down their guard. They're able to relax. They're able to take that pressure off, right? So that was kind of a tangent. But anyway, <laughs> the point is he gave me a birthday present of, you know, some little supplements. And he's like, take this. Your adrenal glands are just going to eat this up and it's going to fuel you and you're going to get back here and you're going to feel different <laughs> after you fill up on this. You know, it's going to change your life. Right. And so in our story here, <laughs> God is telling the prophet, fill up your horn, you know, eat this warm bread on the stones. You've got a journey in ahead of you. And not only that, he said, you know, after all these things happen, he said, I will leave 7000 in Israel, every knee that is not bad to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. Right. So just a few verses earlier, he's saying, I'm all alone, take my life, I'm trying to be faithful, everybody, everybody else all around me is doing the wrong thing, like, I'm outnumbered here, right? And, and that's how you're supposed to feel, right? That's all intentional, is you're supposed to feel alone. And so today, um, if you feel like you don't want to leave the house you don't want to talk to anyone you don't want to be around anyone uh you don't feel safe when you go out you know that is intentional um and that means that they have won the devil has won in discouraging you and so what i want you to realize is that there is another king right mm -hmm. and you're not alone and there's seven thousand others in other words there's a remnant there's always a remnant there's always a remnant in the earth even if you feel alone and just because something was a disappointment a person a government a politician uh, a relationship whatever it was that came in and discouraged you or disappointed you or you know, even if it's multiple experiences, just know that that is not a representation of everyone. And there is a new king in your life. And you and I must go and declare the end of that toxic thing. Declare the end of the toxic thing. Because if you continue to stay joined to something that's uh, stagnant, you know, if you go into the <laughs> Dead Sea, right? You're going to be trapped and your life energy and stuff is going to be drained out of you. So in conclusion here, um, God has a place for you to go. The Lord said to the prophet Samuel, fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. 
So he had a specific place for him to go. So God has an exact place, an exact situation for us to be in. Um, and he has, he's already chosen a new king, right? He's already chosen a replacement for whatever died in your life. Whether it was a relationship, uh, an abusive marriage, or a job that didn't work out, or whatever in your life fell apart and became toxic and stagnant. God has already chosen a new king to fill that slot in your life. And so it's up to you and I to refuel up, whether we have to take the supplements or read the Bible or take deep breaths, get rest under the broom tree. Uh, but instead of asking God to take our life, we have to say, I'm filling up, I'm filling up. And now I'm going to go forth and God is going to show me that new king to fill that slot, right? Someone after his own heart. So David was a different kind of king than Saul. Jesse, uh, Jesus was a different kind of king than Saul, right? So just because we've only experienced certain things does not mean there are not other things out there. So. If you're lying down under a broom tree today, know that God has some bread on the hot stones for you, right? You, you have next Amen. steps. You, there's another stretch on your journey here. So go ahead and fuel up because God has a new king for you today. Yeah. Um, and that, oh, Abigail's coming. Abigail's coming. Yeah. <laughs> Standing up for when you're ready. <laughs> okay, that's the end of mine. Uh, and now here's Abby.